an entitled store owner tries to blame me for his shop going out of business. So I've been building PCs since about 2009, mostly for myself, but I've built a bunch for friends over the years. So my friend's PC stopped working due to his power supply breaking. He had bought a pre-built computer from a company, but they didn't offer that particular model anymore, and trying to get a replacement power supply unit from them was more trouble than it was worth. So I went to the PC shop downtown. This shop sold various parts, but where they really made their money was with their pre-built computers. I went in looking for a power supply, and the owner asked me if he can help. So I explained the situation. He then says that instead of buying a power supply, that I wouldn't even know if it fits my friend's case, that instead I could buy a pre-built computer for X amount of dollars. He said that I could even buy one for myself. I responded by saying, just the power supply, thanks, but I'm good. I just built my own PC. This seemed to annoy the owner, but I didn't really care. I paid for my stuff and I walked out. A few weeks later, I ended up building another friend his own PC. I generally ordered the parts from a guy I knew. He could get me almost anything I wanted. The only thing was I had to pay cash because debit machines are expensive and he was operating his little side business as just that, a small time side business. So I put together my friend's PC and I told him how to clean it and generally how to take care of it. I figured I would make him a PC upgrade kit with some extra cables, some thermal paste and a few other things he wanted. So off to the PC store I went again. It wasn't my first choice, but I had already used all my extra cables for either my PC or my friend's build. The owner's employee was working and I bought probably $500 worth of things. I found a sound card I really wanted, among other things that were quite interesting. The employee called the owner out and he gave me a dirty look but rung up all the items. The owner then said to me, so you won't buy any of my pre-builds or send your buddies in to buy any? You would be really helping out a small business owner. I responded by saying, I'm not interested. I can build what you're selling for a lot cheaper and I'm not in the habit of ripping off my friends. This set the owner off big time. The owner began shouting at me to take my stuff and to get out, and I told him to enjoy the 500 bucks because it would be the last money he'd ever see from me. About two years later, I built a new PC, but things had changed. I had finally gotten a debit card, so online shopping was open to me. My friends knew it and told their friends if they wanted to build a PC to come to me. I spent a crazy amount of money online. Within a year, that owner's shop had closed down, and he raged on social media, claiming that I was creating an unfair competition. I'm not, nor have I ever been, a business. And no, I didn't make a ton of money building PCs for friends as well as their friends. I charged a flat fee to build the thing in the first place, that is, if they could afford it. On a more interesting note, it turned out that the former shop owner was selling pirated Windows copies. I'm not sure if he ever got in trouble for that, but hopefully he did. That store owner is the dinosaur that got taken out by the meteor, which is the internet. I mean, it's really crazy that this guy was really trying to blame this original post for his business failing. I mean, it's not his fault that the original poster knew what he was doing. I mean, talk about looking for a scapegoat in a situation when you're probably just a bad business owner. That owner probably would have generated a lot more revenue as well as interest in his organization and his store if he didn't chase off every single person who was trying to just build a PC. Like, you gotta do more than that, man. You can't blame your bad business structure on some guy who's just a casual novice who clearly just does this on the side to help his friends out. He didn't destroy his business, you did. And the fact that there's selling pirated material to customers is just really gross. I can see why his business fell apart. At the end of the day, the original poster is not at fault for this guy's failing business. He has to own up to that, and hopefully whatever business he starts next, he won't chase off customers just because they know what they're doing. This next one came from the Am I the Jerk podcast subreddit. Check the links in the description if you'd like to submit your own stories. Am I the jerk for deciding to never forgive my friend who kicked me out of her house? For context, I'm a 26-year-old female, and I'm currently staying in my university. University City for 10 days to take my exams. I moved out of this city not too long before the whole COVID-19 situation started, all because I did a semester abroad in Spain. When I returned to my country, I moved back with my family due to financial problems. I couldn't afford to live in a shared apartment in my university city anymore. These last few years have been a roller coaster of emotions. My father passed away from COVID last year, and he left my family a huge financial problem, both legal and illegal ones. I never had a good relationship with my father, all because he was terrible to me when I was a child, all the way up until I was 16 years old. Fortunately, my parents split in 2019, but I developed a serious anxiety and depression issue because of that. I had to face multiple situations with my family, all because of my father. Fast forward to now. As I said before, I decided to come here to take these exams, even though I could have done those online. I needed a breath of fresh air, considering all that I've been through. I asked a friend, we'll call her Stella, that's not her real name, if I could stay 10 days at her apartment. This way we could still 
hang out together and I could have saved some money. Stella and I were roommates for a year and a half before I went to Spain. We developed a beautiful friendship, or so I thought, and I stayed in contact during the years. She always used to say that I am her little sister and that we supported each other during difficult times. When we used to live together, we had three flatmates. One of them we'll call Billy. That's not their real name. Billy and I were friends initially, but after I broke up with my ex, we started to get more intimate and develop some feelings. This lasted for a short period of time because Billy studied abroad in America. And when he came back, we decided that it was better to end whatever was between us. Stella and Billy were good friends when we lived together and continued their friendship during these years. Instead, Billy and I stopped talking to each other in 2019 because he started seeing one of Stella's friends that didn't like me much due to my previous relationship with Billy, or whatever it was, to be honest. A few months ago, Billy ended the relationship with Stella's friend after he caught her cheating on him. So he started reaching out to me via Instagram, and we had brief conversations, just talking about stupid things and mainly just sending memes to each other. Short after I arrived at the city of my university, Billy contacted Stella and asked her if she could host him at her house for one night so the three of us could hang out like we used to do when we were all flatmates. Last Friday, I took an exam and it went really bad, so I was already in a sad mood. On Saturday morning, Billy arrived at Stella's apartment, and it was kind of an awkward situation at the beginning, but after a few hours, everyone was pretty cool. We decided to go for a walk, and we had lunch together. At 2.30 in the afternoon, I went to Stella's apartment because I had a meeting with a student for a volunteering program. After my meeting, I decided to stay at Stella's apartment because I didn't feel good and I was feeling very nauseous. During the afternoon, Stella's boyfriend joined them, and they came back to the apartment at around 8 o'clock in the evening. Stella's boyfriend gave me the impression that he was some kind of weird, manipulative guy, but I still decided to give him a chance because he is Stella's boyfriend. The four of us went to dinner and we stayed at the restaurant approximately three hours due to a problem with the orders. Later on, we decided to reach another of Stella's friends and her boyfriend, whom I know, but I don't have a particular relationship with them. I know only the list of supposed bad things this girl has done to Stella because she would often call me to vent. This girl and her boyfriend were at the bar with their work colleagues, around 10 to 12 people I have never met before, that didn't really introduce themselves, and it wasn't really a problem. So me and Billy decided to go inside to get a drink because we didn't want to wait for the waiter outside. When we got our drinks, we started talking. It was the first time during the day that we really had a chance to talk, especially after not talking to each other for almost three years. And honestly, we had so much to tell each other. After 15 minutes inside, Stella entered the bar and asked us why we were staying in the bar. She asked this question in a very annoying way and replied that we were talking about our experience during the last few years. After another 15 minutes, we went outside and joined the others, but Stella was only talking to her friend. Her boyfriend didn't even want to talk to me either. I was a little upset, so I asked Billy if he wanted to go get another beer in a cheap store not too far from the bar. He said okay, and we asked Stella if she wanted to come with us, but she said no. So Billy and I went to get some drinks, and after the previous drinks and shots we had at the other bar, we were pretty much under the influence, if you know what I mean. So we started walking to another place to get some more drinks and we totally lost track of time. At 2 in the morning, Billy sees a text from Stella and this text was sent at around 12 o'clock at night where she was asking if everything was okay and where we had been. We replied in a very drunk way that we lost track of time and that we would return to the apartment shortly. The first weird thing is that she didn't call us when she was going home so we didn't know she had left. We managed to get home at about 4 in the morning. Stella had to wake up to let us in because there weren't any spare keys. So once we got in, Billy and I slept together on the air mattress. We only slept. We didn't do anything else. The following morning, I woke up with a text from Stella saying that I had to take all of my stuff and disappear from her apartment. I panicked and tried to call her, but she declined all of my calls and later told me and Billy that we were rude during the previous night and that I had a gigantic ego. I know that what I did was wrong and that I owe her an apology, but I am shocked that she decided to kick me out, especially after she insisted on me staying at her place during these 10 days because I wanted to go to an Airbnb. I took all my stuff and went to another friend's house and blocked her everywhere. None of my friends are calling me a jerk with the situation. They all pretty much agree that coming back at 4 in the morning was wrong, but we all think that she should have confronted me before kicking me out. But I really need to see other perspectives first. So am I the jerk for deciding to not forgive her if she comes back to her senses, as well as wanting to cut her completely out of my life? While I don't think that Stella should have just outright kicked you out of the apartment for staying up until four in the morning, as well as forcing her to get up just to let you in, not to mention the fact that you've been out drinking all night and you kind of ignored her, especially when she's opening her house
house to you, I do think you were in the wrong for doing that. And that's probably a huge reason why Stella said, hey, you gotta go. I think it's a really extreme response, but I can completely understand where she's coming from. But in that same vein of thought, I really don't think that warrants you getting kicked out of her apartment the first day. There should 100% be a conversation about all of this, but I don't think you should be kicked out of the apartment, all because you stayed out really late. I think there's some middle ground here that could easily be seen. And I also don't think you should cut this person out of your life completely. Like, you have a long history with this person. There's no reason to just throw that out the window just because Stella overreacted. I would at least try to talk to her first and be like, hey, whoa, let's figure this out. So my final verdict is I think you're both kind of in the wrong and I think some communication would really help in figuring the situation out. But what do you think? Leave a comment down below. What would you do if you're in this situation? An entitled woman tries to put my dog up for adoption. My fiance and I adopted a dog a few days ago. We haven't had a dog before, so when our dog started pooping and peeing all over our house, we were a little freaked out, so we turned to a Facebook dog group for advice on how to help our dog. We learned it was simply the dog adjusting, and we didn't need to be concerned. However, this is where an entitled Karen comes in. This Karen jumped to such a conclusion, I'm surprised she didn't hurt her leg. She honestly believed that because we had no clue that a dog would go to the bathroom all over our house for the first little bit, especially after just getting them, and that clearly meant that we shouldn't have a dog and that we were likely abusing it. The Karen took it upon herself to steal pictures of my dog from my Facebook account to then literally put her up for adoption, sharing my user to random people looking for a dog. When we told her to get lost, she threatened to tell the rescue facility that we got our dog from that we were abusing the dog and that she would then call future rescue facilities that we might contact just to warn them about us. She then made several posts about how we abuse our dog despite not even knowing us and never talking to us outside this situation. Thankfully, though, we reported her to Facebook, and hopefully we never have to hear from them again. What a crazy situation. Imagine going on Facebook just to try and get advice on this new dog that you have no experience with, only to have some psychopath try to be like, hmm, you clearly are treating this dog wrong. Let me put it up for adoption for you. Like, what kind of nut job would just jump in and interject themselves into someone else's life and then pretend like it's the other person's fault for just being so weird and toxic? Like, what a complete freak. But honestly, two people can play at that game, because now's the time where they could have easily taken her account and posted it everywhere. Stolen pictures of her and started to make up weird rumors about her. All jokes aside though, this is really weird behavior. You don't just do that to someone else's dog, especially when you've never met them. Hopefully they figured out how to better handle their new dog and hopefully they never have to deal with this crazy Karen ever again. I found out my mom is cheating on my dad and I don't know what to do. Growing up, I received a lot of love and affection from both of my parents. Family has always been my weakness. Anything bad involving my family, I always feel most stressed out and the most anxious. My parents are always fighting and it became a normal thing in my life. Everything was going great until I found out that my mom is cheating on my dad. I first found out in early 2020 and I was 14 years old at the time. My mom picked me up from school as always. She was waiting for me inside the car and she was on a call. I got in the car and sat in the passenger seat at the back waiting for her to finish the call. She wasn't on speaker so I did not know who she was talking to. I just knew that it was a guy since I heard a bit of his voice, so I just assume that it's her co-worker or a friend, which I didn't think much about. The call goes on for another two minutes, which then I heard the guy say, I love you to her. That shocked me so much. I wish I misheard that. My mom tenses a bit, then took a glance at me from the rearview mirror. Then the call ended. The person she was on call with definitely was not my dad. My parents never said I love you to each other, especially from my dad. Even if it was my dad, I would definitely remember his voice. The call wasn't on speaker, but I heard everything. My mom looked worried and acted strange. She then turned back to me, asking some weird probing questions, most likely just out of anxiety. I didn't question her about it, so I just let it go and continued with my day. But it got stuck in my mind for several days. Then I decided to look into it further. I got her phone password and went to the call history to see who it is that she called when she picked me up from school. Then I realized that he was her co-worker, that she met at work every day. I was in disbelief, but I needed more evidence to confirm that my mom is really cheating on my dad. My mom regularly uses WhatsApp to text people. When I looked in the chat box of my mom and him, I noticed that their messages were deleted. That makes me even more curious as to why she deleted it or felt the need to. I knew that they were texting every day because it leaves a timestamp, but in this case with no messages in their chat box. So I decided to install a notification saver on her phone to see their texts. And it worked. I see all kinds of messages 
that I didn't want to see from him. I never knew my mom would do this to our family. She was the best mom ever and was my role model. It makes me so disappointed in her actions. Since the app was a notification saver, I didn't see what she wrote to him, but I took screenshots of everything and sent it to my phone. But seeing his messages made my heart sink and I cried uncontrollably. It was the worst feeling ever. Every day after my mom comes back from work, I always sneak into her phone to see those messages and check what they are up to each day. There wasn't a day when I read those messages and didn't cry. It just pains me so much. They were calling each other cute names, saying I miss you and I love you regularly. It grosses me out when I saw him in the text calling my mom his wife. They always plan to go out together after work. Since they work in the same place, it's easier to meet. I started digging more and I found out that he had a wife and a daughter that is currently working. They always post pictures of their family, which makes me feel sad for them not knowing what the head of their family is doing behind their back. One day, I was too upset at my mom and said, I know your love life secret, then stormed up to lock myself in my room. It took about an hour for her to unlock my door. She came in and sat on my bed and asked me why did I say that. My mom goes on to give several excuses as to why I might think this. She said, sadly, she is already in her mid-50s and she's too old to be cheating. She then told me to apologize to her for saying that. I did apologize and I cried so much because I felt bad for saying that to her in the first place. I didn't completely believe her excuses, but it did make me feel like a terrible daughter at the time. There was always a business trip at my mom's workplace, so I don't get to check her phone often. So I installed a WhatsApp webpage on my tablet to see her real-time messages even without her phone. I checked it almost every day, which then basically became a habit of mine. She deleted their messages every time they finished texting, just so they wouldn't get caught. So I never left the app, just so I could see what they are up to. Since I have a weakness for my family, I never failed to cry when I would see these disgusting messages. Every single day on my mom's business trip, at midnight he always texts my mom asking for her room number and asking her to open the door. And of course she went to open the door or else she would have declined him or refused to tell her room number on text. Only God knows what was going on inside that room. I didn't know what to do so I kept calling her until she picked up. She picked up after six calls and got mad at me. She said that I was supposed to be sleeping and said I was disturbing her sleep since she was too tired from work. She then proceeds to turn off the internet for me. I was at my lowest point that time. I felt miserable. I do not know what else to do to stop them and I cried myself to sleep. Her business trips go on for a week and it happens every day. The same text conversations, the same response. There were many business trips that my mom went on this year since COVID in our country has gotten so much better. She is currently on a business trip right now. He picked her up at my house three days ago. I knew this because I read their chat from the night before my mom's trip. She told him to not come out of the car, she being afraid that my dad or me might see him. My mom was acting super suspicious, telling me to just stay in the house and to go back to sleep instead of sending her off into the car. I really wanted to see his face, so I said it was okay, I'm not sleepy anymore. She then yelled at me and closed the front door at my face. This put me in a melancholy mood until now. I didn't bother texting her or calling her, even though I knew that guy was in her room every night. I was too mad at her. I still check her messages through my tablet regularly. I can truthfully say that this completely destroys my mental health. I just wish she would come back home safely from her trip. I still love her very much, regardless regardless of her actions. I never wanted to tell my dad about any of this. I don't want my family to be separated. The thought of them getting a divorce completely destroys me. I can never let that happen. There were times that I wanted to tell my dad about it, but I was afraid that it's just going to hurt him. I know that my dad deserves to know everything about this, but the relationship between my parents was already pretty bad. They sleep in different rooms and got into a fight every day. I don't want their relationship to get any worse than this. I did try to give hints to my father several times times, but I don't think he's getting it. My mom is the best mother for me and always will be, but she is the worst wife to my dad. I feel guilty and sad for my dad every time I see him. I feel so bad for him that I can't even look at him directly in the face or else I'll cry. He is such a good person and doesn't deserve any of this happening. I think the reason that leads my mom to have an affair is that my dad wasn't a romantic person at all. He doesn't buy flowers or give anything to her, not even on their anniversary or her birthday at all. I've 
never seen them kiss before in my entire life. I have no idea how long my mom has been with her co-worker, but I am sure that it's been more than five years. Ever since I found out about the affair at the start of 2020 until now, I still hold my anger towards her, but I do not have the courage to tell my dad about it. My family is everything to me. I would rather cease to exist than see my family get separated. I have a little brother that I care about so much. I knew telling my dad would affect his life, and it's another reason why I'm keeping my mouth shut. I am genuinely scared of what's going to happen. I got screenshots and everything. Should I show my dad? But this could potentially ruin our family, which I'm most scared of. What should I do? This is a heavy one. Honestly, in this kind of situation, in my opinion, it is not healthy for your parents to stay together. Your dad has every right to know that this is going on. This is an enormous breach of trust. You should tell your dad exactly what's going on and show screenshots. Show him everything. You are torturing yourself by allowing this woman to manipulate you. You don't owe her anything, and I know you say that she's a good mom, but honestly, she is not very good. The fact that she is cheating on her husband sends a very clear message to you and the rest of the family that all of you are just on the side burner. She does not consider you her main priority. I have little to no patience or forgiveness for anybody who cheats. So if I was in your shoes, I absolutely would tell my father about this. He has every right to know, and he absolutely should should take the steps necessary to get you as well as your little brother away from her. And you have years of proof in front of you. I know it may seem scary, but this is honestly the right thing to do. But that's just me. What would you do if you were in this situation? Leave a comment down below. We'd love to read it. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the Cream of the Crop music. Search Cream of the Stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright-free music to use for your next stream.